In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Let us say together this portion of Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherub. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man that you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us light that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourselves, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the gospel according to Mark. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, 
each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the first Sunday in Advent, which marks the start of the new year in the church calendar. And I just have to say, I'm ready for this old year to be done. There's something that is so beautiful about Advent that I think is particularly highlighted this year. Advent is a darker season. We wear purple like we do in Lent because they are both seasons of preparation. Often, the darkness and mysteriousness of Advent can be lessened by our society's preemptive celebration of Christmas. Don't get me wrong, I love Christmas. I love the celebrations, the traditions, the spirit of love that comes to greet us in ways we don't see throughout the year. But Advent is not that season. Advent is a season in which we are reminded of the importance of Christ's light coming into the world. It's a season where we are reminded of the amazing grace of God coming down into the world and becoming one of us. It's a season where we are reminded of our utter dependence on God to still come and be a part of our lives as we work in and among a world that is in need of some TLC. The good news is that Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming to finish the great work that started 2,000 years ago. Jesus is coming to liberate us from the darkness that we see around us. This is what we wait for in Advent, the ushering in of God's new kingdom. As the gospel says today, beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. Christ's arrival is preceded by much darkness and despair. Jesus warns his disciples, saying, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. In the midst of Jesus' warning is a gift of hope. Out of this darkness comes the light. In the midst of the darkness is the great hope of Jesus, the great promise of redemption. Like I said, there is something about this year that seems to lend itself to the meaning of Advent more than in other years. 2020 has been hard, y'all. A pandemic, a contentious election, racial injustice in communities everywhere, economic hardship for many families, growing loneliness. It just seems as if we are growing apart from one another and we don't seem to know how to get back on the right track. While there's much to say about all of the issues that I just named, I think I can say one thing for sure. These are not signs of the kingdom of God. We are not living in the world that God intends for us to live in. Ultimately, that's what this season is all about. We are not living in the world that God imagines for all people. We have not yet seen the fruits of God's labor come to yield. And so, in the midst of the darkness around us, we wait with hope for the light that is just around the corner. We wait expectantly for the light to come into the world and to envelop us. That's why this is a perfect time in our church calendar for the start of a new year. The new church year offers us a chance for renewal. It offers us a chance for change. It offers us a chance to embrace God's loving presence in our lives. 
as we turn towards Advent, we turn towards God. Just as Mary waits for the birth of Jesus, so we wait for Jesus to return and finish our liberation from this weary world. We are celebrating the fact that God came into the world and became one of us, and acknowledging the fact that the completion of this redemptive act is yet to be revealed. It is an already and a not yet. So yes, we wait. But that's not the full picture of our call towards Christian discipleship. When Jesus ascended to heaven after the resurrection, he doesn't say to his disciples, stay right here and don't touch anything. I'll be right back. No, he says in Acts, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Being a witness to Jesus is being a witness to his radical ministry of love. It's more than just being witness, it's a partaking in this ministry as well. Advent is a season of preparation, and preparation on some level requires action. As we celebrate the dawning of a new church year, we are invited to participate in God's presence in the world. We are invited to partake in the Incarnation. Perhaps the new church year offers a glimpse at what might await us in 2021. Perhaps we can walk in 2021 with the hope that we find in the midst of Advent. Perhaps we can dream about what God would really want for us in a world that is so broken. In reality, we don't even have to dream that hard. Our faith tradition has offered us so many clues for what we should be doing and what kind of presence we should be in the world. One thing that I have always loved about the Episcopal Church is our baptismal covenant because it so wonderfully encapsulates our journey of discipleship. Those about to be baptized are always asked these five questions. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I think the brilliance of these five charges is that they leave work for us. They are general, but not to the point of being simple. It leaves room for us as disciples of the living God to figure out how best to practice these tasks in our own lives and contexts. If we are supposed to be a witness to Christ to the ends of the earth, it has to be true that the expression of our witness will look different within the beautiful diversity of God's world. Unity does not mean uniformity. God has left room for us to figure out how to best participate in God's ministry of love, redemption, and grace. The dreams, hopes, and aspirations of this new year will only be possible through preparation. It won't come from waiting around idly. We wait with hope. We wait with patience. We wait by acting. We wait by living into the elements of our baptismal covenant. We wait by spreading the love of Jesus Christ to a world wrapped up in darkness. This year has been hard, and no doubt this next one will be hard too. Out of the darkness comes light. Out of the despair comes hope. Keep awake, brothers and sisters, for the glory of the Lord is about to be revealed. Amen.
Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Lord, your ministers with righteousness, let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated unto you, and then use us, we pray you, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. This is another day, O Lord. We know not what it will bring forth, but make us ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If we are to stand up, help us to stand bravely. If we are to sit still, help us to sit quietly. If we are to lie low, help us to do it patiently. And if we are to do nothing, let us do it gallantly. Make these words more than words, and give us the Spirit of Jesus. Amen. Aloud or in silence, let us name before God those things for which we offer our prayers.
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.